G'day friends, welcome to today's video. Now this video kind of piggybacks off the Halloween Doodles video that we did where I broke down some of the, the elements that you might want to draw at Halloween time and broke them into much more simplified versions. So today I'm going to do a Christmas version where I'm going to put it all together in a spread at the end. Um, but if you're just sticking around for the tutorial part, that's the, the start, the part that we're doing right now. And, uh, and what I wanted to share with you today is we're doing the same thing. We're going to break it down into shapes and bits, um, but I'm going to do two versions for you of each. And the first version version is for the people that just want to do it. So you just need something uh, easy to follow and you want to uh, keep it pretty simplified. The second version is for the people that just really want to go there. So people that might have a bit more time to spare, people that like fussing with a bit more detail um, and, and taking it to an extra place. Honestly, both are very, very simple, and I wouldn't say one is harder than the other. One just takes more time than the other. So you can choose to do all of them, the, the simplified version. You could choose to do all of them, the uh, you know the, the extra time-consuming version. But um, I would recommend switching it up in your piece. You know, keep some things more simplified that you don't need to bring attention to, and maybe choose the more labored version for for some of the things that you really do care to spend a bit more time working on. Obviously, it's all up to you, and I completely support whatever you choose to do. Um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna to give you two versions because some of them are so so simple it would take like 10 seconds to show you so for the first thing we're gonna do is holly now holly is uh, very very simple when you break it down but I feel like a lot of people struggle with the leaves so let's just start with three berries so we've just got three round circles I like to keep them attached now the the leaf shape if you want to it's kind of like the bat wing we did at Halloween it's this rounded M shape like this and it upside down it is a rounded double W. But if you're struggling with that, uh, just do the M shape up here, flip your paper upside down, and do exactly the same M shape down there. Now, connect it from the part where the two circles meet and there's a gap in here. So I like to just keep it in the gap, keep things really simple for myself, do the M shape and call it a day. And then I want to put one out here as well. You can choose to put the leaves wherever you want. I just feel like that's one of the most simple ways to draw, you know, the holly and the berries. So now we're going to do the one that's a bit more time consuming. Uh, I'm gonna, still going to do the three berries, so the three shapes here, and I'm still going to do exactly the same thing that we did with the leaf. So the M and the W or just the two M's if you're going to flip your page. And, uh, and then we've got our, our holly. Now sometimes I do like to add this stripe down the middle, this line, and then I like to connect uh, lines from that that midpoint. I'd like to connect uh, veins from this midpoint. I'd like to connect them out to where the uh, the point is on the leaf. And when you're coloring the berries, just an extra little step you might want to take. Draw these little half moons in the side, all on the same place in your berry, and that's going to serve as the highlight. So when you color it in, um, those berries are actually going to look like they're, uh, you know, catching a bit of light and that they're a bit more three-dimensional than we drew them. So that would be the more uh, time-consuming version of Holly, and uh, obviously you're free to do both. I'm just putting the time-consuming one in there for people that just want to add like this as one accent. But if you're going to do this all over a dress as a pattern, obviously you don't want to do this uh, unless you've got 45 hours to spare. So that's why that's in there, but honestly both are simple when you see them broken down. Candy canes are probably more simple than what we just did. Uh, this is not going in order of difficulty at all. The, the shape is basically a hook, right? But I feel like maybe some people get confused uh, by how that looks and, uh, and some people like to stretch the proportions and feel like, oh, I, I just doesn't look like a candy cane. So my suggestion to you would be to just draw a J. So turn your paper upside down or whatever way you want it to face and just draw a capital J. And then we're going to draw another line that's the same kind of a J that's just running parallel to the one we did. So obviously a little bit smaller. And you wanna keep that distance between these lines the same the whole way through. Now, when you flip it back upside down, you've got your little candy cane. The most simple way to cut it off would just to be to put these straight lines in going all the way down your candy cane and, uh, and just cutting it off like that, calling it a day and shading in every other space. And there you look like you've got a really sweet, simple candy cane. Now for the one that's a bit more time consuming, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm not gonna flip my paper this time because uh, I, I, I think I can manage to draw the candy cane. I say confidently before I screw it up. <laughs> um, so I've got the shape here, we've got the the, the bigger J and then the little one if you flipped it upside down. You can have the candy canes facing either way, it just doesn't matter. Um, the more time consuming version or the one that might look a, a little bit more interesting is if you round this off. So where they end, where those two lines are, round them off with a bit of a U shape. 
uh, just to keep that edge rounded. And now what you're going to do when you're putting these lines in, instead of going straight, you're going to curve them. And you want to keep that same curve going all the way around your candy cane. So if it helps to move your paper with it, uh, definitely move your paper along with it because you want to keep that same curve as you go down the candy cane. Now if you really want to go there, uh, put in some extra lines that run beside it and make a bit more of a pattern on your candy cane. Um, and I feel like that will just make it a little bit more interesting than just having, you know, the, the evenly spaced sections. And when you color it in, the same thing we did with this barrel, we're actually gonna leave a highlight in the middle of the candy cane. So we're not gonna color in the entire candy cane in every other spot. We're gonna choose the areas we wanna color and we're just gonna uh, leave that middle section open. And that will just uh, suggest that light is hitting it that way and that it will look a little, a little bit more rounded and curved and three dimensional. Now you could just color it in and go over it with a white paint pen or a white Uniball Signo. That's completely fine as well. Um, but I find that sometimes we don't have them or sometimes they're running out. So just leaving the white space provided the back background is white is is going to give you the same effect. So uh, just leaving that middle white space like we did with the berries assumes that there's a bit of a shine on that uh, topmost part of the candy cane which would make it look a little bit more rounded. Now for presents, we're just going to do a really really simple presents here. We're not going to try and draw soccer balls or anything. <laughs> uh, we're just going to draw squares or rectangles. If you want to draw them one in front of the other, that's completely fine. Um, just all mismatched shapes really, and uh, but I'm just going to keep them very flat, very two-dimensional. Now what you want to do on top is just kind of put a cross and then two little uh, leaf shapes and I like to put these little strings hanging down. And I find that this is the, the best way, the most a uh, time efficient way to draw some presence because oftentimes we don't really need to make the presence a focal point and uh, and obviously you're free from there to do whatever you want to uh, jazz them up maybe put your patterns in there and uh, I don't know stencil a pattern through as if it were wrapping paper uh, but I find that this is an interesting way to do it and I like to keep some of the crosses off center some of the crosses in the center uh, maybe one I wouldn't put a bow on there but you could mix and match that up I wanted to do a bit more of a time consuming present we're going to do that trick that we I feel like we learned in primary school school where you actually draw you know one box here and you draw another box uh, just off to the side so you've got these two boxes overlapping and now you want to connect the corners to the corners of the other box now the one that we don't want to connect is this here because we're actually going to uh, we're going to pretend that this box isn't see-through <laughs> for our present. Uh, that would kind of uh, that would kind of defeat the purpose of wrapping the present, right? So uh, I'm actually just going to darken up this square so you know that this is the front of my present, and this is a three-dimensional box. If I could, I would erase this line at the back because I don't need it. Uh, but because I can't erase this blue pencil, I'm just going to work with it. And what I'm going to do is just use the same principle as we did with the presents up here. I'm actually just going to shade my ribbon over the top of that. Uh, that'll get rid of just that one on the front. And then when you're coming down this way, you need to follow the angle that these two lines are going at. So your, your ribbon isn't going to go off straight like this. It's actually going to curve down this way. Or it's going to angle down this way following the same uh, angle that these lines are on this side. And we're going to do the same thing down here. So this line is going on this angle, this, this ribbon must come off at this angle, and this ribbon obviously is the edge of that, and it would match up to this one. So there you've got kind of a three-dimensional present. From there you can add on your bow or your gift tag, whatever you want to add on to that. Sometimes I will go up and just scribble on some uh, some bows like that, or if I want to make this a bow on the front, I'll just do kind of like a very rough flower shape. Um, so those are options to, to do that with your presents. On the edge of the page, we're going to fit this in here because it really doesn't take up a lot of space. We're going to do some ornaments. We're going to keep them very simple. You could go on Google Images and find some reference shapes for ornaments. Uh, but to be honest, I feel like any shape would work. So we're just going to do a circle and over here we'll do this like teardrop shape. But I wanted to show you what makes it kind of look like an ornament because anything could probably be an ornament, right? Uh, it's these little hooks that are on the top. So you want to draw a little square or a little rectangle, whichever you prefer. Like this one might be more of a, a longer rectangle. You want to draw that at the top of your ornament, wherever you want the hanger to sit. And then you want to scallop these, uh, these little petals kind of going onto your ornament. And that looks like it's attached as an ornament. And then you'll just put like a little hook on top. 
and that's as simple as that is. Now, if you wanted to go a little bit more detailed with ornaments, I feel like you can't really, uh, you know, jazz up this technique much, but what you can do is uh, obviously play with the patterns on your ornaments. And like we did with the berries, if you want your ornament to have a bit of a shine to it and to look a bit 3D, draw in your little moon shape, and then wherever you put your, uh, your decorations on, like your decorative elements on your bauble, just keep that white shape exposed. So I'm gonna put lines on this, just stripes, just a little striped ornament from a Christmas tree. And I'm going to not color over that white space. Alternatively, you could, you could use your white paint marker to come back over the top of that, but I just thought, because I'm not gonna do that and be that extra today, let's just do that. And then I might put some little stripes up there. And you've got a cute little ornament that you could, uh, you could play around with. You could stencil inside that too, like you might do for some wrapping paper. Uh, the options are limitless, obviously. <laughs> so you can kind of make anything an ornament as long as you've got this little, uh, this little square or box on top and this little scalloped edge with the hook. I feel like that's kind of what makes it the ornament. Now we're gonna draw a Santa hat. Uh, the first one is super, super easy. We're gonna draw a little rectangle. And if you can imagine that the face, the face is, you know, down here. So you've got some eyes and a mouth. <laughs> uh, you're gonna draw a little rectangle on top of the head. And then you wanna draw a little triangle. It can go straight up. I like it to go off a little bit, but you wanna draw a little triangle from that too. And then a circle on top. Now, if you wanna get real fancy with that, you could just leave it at that, uh, but just try and add like a little scalloped effect, a little, um, like a little cloud to the rectangle area and to the little fluff ball on top, the uh, the pom-pom, sorry. <laughs> and then, uh, then I would just color in this, this little uh, triangle here that I could still see. So that's a very, very simple Santa hat. Let's go for something a little bit more time consuming, but still very simple as well. So we've got our little face here. These are super amazing face drawings. We're gonna do the same idea. We've got this rectangle, but I do want to kind of round it up this time. So it's 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 still a rectangle-ish, but it's very rounded. Um, so it might look like a one of those like little Russian fluffy hats. Um, but we're gonna put that on like that. And uh, and this time I do still want to have this little triangle going off to the side, but I actually want my hat to finish down here somewhere. So I'm gonna put a little point where I want it to finish, and I'm gonna put my little bowl because that's where I I, I do want it to finish there. I want to take the top of this little triangle over here and then I just want to kind of curve it down to the ball. It doesn't have to be curved, but I feel like curved kind of looks a little bit more realistic and a little bit more floppy. And, uh, and from underneath, you just want to connect it somewhere, making sure that the line, uh, the width of that hat does get thinner and tapers in towards this, this little ball here. Now this is where one of the tricks come in. If you just draw a little Y up here, that will imply that the hat has folded over and is going uh, to slope down ways. So you can put just like a little Y shape in there and that will look like the crease of, of the fabric. Um, when you're doing the fluff, I would in encourage you to uh, maybe vary up some of the sizes. So make some of the fluff big, make some of the scallops really small and, uh, and, and play with that. And then remember, you are doing it curved this time because you kind of want to imply that it actually is sitting uh, more snug to the head than this one is. So uh, that's the little fluff ball there. I'd give it a little bit of shading just for fun. And then we're going to just darken up the outlines of the hat that we just drew. If you want to apply the same principle from the candy cane trick that we did, uh, you can put that curved line going down the hat, as long as you've got the curve and they're all kind of the same, the curve is facing the same direction. Like you don't want to put one curve that way and one curve that way. If they're going that way, you want them all to go that way. So we're going to put that going down the hat, just like that. I do like to tip my page because I find it easier to keep doing the same stroke over and over again. Whoops. And then, uh, and then possibly I would shade every other, every other panel, I guess. And uh, it could be a little, little candy cane-ish hat. You could put little cross, uh, little strikes across things, make it look a little bit more patchwork if you want. Um, but that's a, a really cute way to do a bit of a more time consuming center hat, but nothing too difficult. So center hat, elf shoes. We're doing exactly the same thing we did at Halloween. So we're gonna do the teardrop shape upside down. We're gonna put the little oval across here, and then we're gonna connect this 
to this. So that's our little shoe. And then this time, instead of doing a full on spiral, I actually just want to take it up just kind of on a little curve. And I want to put my little fluff ball back down there too. So that to me is going to be my elf shoe for this tutorial. I, like we did in the witch boots, if you wanted to bring it up a little bit, you could make a little elf booty and, uh, and obviously just go over your outlines for however you want that to pop out for you. And then you can add in any details that you want. I'll just do another one down here. We've got the tear shape upside down. We've got the oval. I'm gonna keep this oval relatively close so that it's a much higher heel this time. So this is a very glamorous elf shoe. <laughs> this elf don't play no games. She is, she's all business. 80s power suit woman elf. Uh, and then I'm gonna curve this up more towards the boot this time and just give it a cute little uh, pom pom on the end. Now, if you really wanna take it there, I'm gonna add a little step. Here, I wanna put a circle at the top of the teardrop shape. Now, this is just gonna help me. I'm gonna put a little rectangle here because it's gonna be booties. When I go to trace around the outside of this shoe, I do wanna kind of bump it out a little bit where that circle is and then come back down for the heel. Now, I'm going to darken up this bit in here because I want it to be a really, really severe heel. I'm gonna keep this a rounded circle and not so much a pom-pom this time. And then when I come back, I don't want to follow the circle this way. I actually just want to bring it down like we would normally do. So the only reason I would add that circle in is so that when you're tracing it, you could bump a little section out for the heel, just so that um, it kind of looks more like a foot is in there and not just some rectangular shape. <laughs> oh, this one is one of my favorites. I love ribbons and I love bows. Obviously, I could do a bow like this and I could just do my ribbons as straight lines. I do that all the time. I love it. It's super simple and it's effective like that. It doesn't need to be more than that. So just two little quick oval shapes and then some strings down this way. Now, if you want to take this ribbon to a more interesting place, let's just make a line that goes down our page, kind of a curved line because ribbons are floating in the wind. Um, now, you want to draw a line. You want to start uh, kind of like the candy cane we did, you want to keep that width the same, but when you're going down, cross those lines, and then as soon as you come back out, remember to keep the width the same as you had it before, and then we're going to cross it down another time down here. And then I'm just going to put like a little V shape to cut that off, uh, so that it looks like a ribbon. And then it looks, it literally looks like a ribbon that's folding and twisting in the wind. So I really like that for ribbons. I'll show you what happens if you don't, um, if, if you go down too straight, you're obviously not going to be able to get much of a cross going on. Uh, it, it, it just kind of looks like a ribbon is, is falling. This is kind of looking like a ribbon's kind of blowing in the breeze. If you go down too curvy, um, it's going to be fine, but you're going to have a lot of twists and bends and uh, it, you could get a little confused and maybe uh, stuff yourself up a little bit. Um, I do just like a soft curve like this, but also if you're going down, if you're following it and you jut across to make the same kind of a, uh, a line on this side and you end up with this very harsh uh, crossing point, that's not going to look very realistic either. So just remember, um, give it a practice a couple of times. It honestly doesn't take much. You just want to kind of flow with it. And that's going to give you the most uh, fluid, kind of soft, loose effect. If you start laboring on it too much and getting really, really specific, it might look a little bit too angular and then it would look like uh, maybe stiff ribbon. Uh, and this is more of a satin ribbon, I'm saying anyway. <laughs> Alright, I flipped it over and we're going to do gingerbread men. For gingerbread men, you just want to draw a little stick figure. So we're going to draw it down like this. I've got a circle, I've got a line coming off down for his body, I've got two legs coming down in like a V shape, and then I've just got two little arms coming out here. Now the trick to making it a gingerbread man is actually following around the lines that you drew and curving everything. So keeping it very, uh, very chubby and curvy and uh, you know, nothing to, you don't really want any straight lines on this because it probably wouldn't bake that way. Uh, but that's the gingerbread man shape. I find it easier to start with the stick figure because I, I just, I, for some reason I can't draw this shape very well. I start to uh, slim it down. It just doesn't even look like a gingerbread cookie in the end. So I would just say that's your basic gingerbread man and you could just put a little bit of a face on him. If you wanted to actually go a little bit gingerbread, I'm gonna put it in very lightly, my, my guidelines this time. So I've got the head, I've got the stick body and the two arms. I'm gonna go around that to make my gingerbread, remembering to keep everything very, very curved. 
I like to just put a little uh, squiggly border around the entire thing. That just makes it look like my gingerbread man has icing on it and you could make this part white or you could make his body white, whatever you want, but I just like to Im imply that there's icing on it. I'm just gonna put two little circles for his eyes here. And I'm gonna draw little C shapes in there. I'm gonna put a little nose on and then I do like to draw the mouth like a smiley mouth, but then I like to outline it like a clown. I don't know why but I, I think that looks a little cuter than just having the smiley mouth. And then I put some little gumdrop buttons on him here. Now you could dress it any way you like, and you could obviously color it any way you like. You can put lashes on, why not? <laughs> you can put a little crown on. So uh, he, she is the king or queen of gingerbread kingdom. Uh, obviously any way that you wanna do that is perfectly fine by me. Now we're gonna draw fairy lights. So let's just draw a string of uh, you know, the string, the cord, whatever you want to put it to. And uh, I find the most simple way to draw fairy lights would probably be just to draw these little leaf shapes off, you know, kind of evenly spaced and then color them in. Um, obviously the way you color them in multicolored would infer that they're lights rather than leaves. Um, but if you do want to make a fairy light uh, strand that looks a bit more realistic, when you've got your strand like that, maybe double up your strand so it looks like a cord. And then you wanna put little um, squares coming off. So these are gonna be like the, the little plugs that your lights fit into. And then draw your teardrop shape from that. And that would probably look a bit more like uh, Christmas lights. Now we didn't have these kind of a shape Christmas lights at home. Um, so it's, it's interesting, but I actually love them because they remind me of the Grinch. So we've just got a teardrop shape here or an almond shape. And then we're just gonna put the square covering the bottom of it. And then if you want to color it in, make sure that you leave some of this white space again and uh, and possibly uh, come back in with your paint marker if you color over some of that, uh, or you just don't want to leave it in the first place. You can just come over with a white paint marker. And then I'm going to color this in a little bit darker uh, to show that that's not part of the light. So that would be the light for me. And then obviously it would be connected to the string. And you could put little rays to imply that it was lit, uh, or you could just color it cer a certain way to make sure that it looked like it was shining. Now the very last thing I wanted to show you were washi tape trees. I like to grab washi tape and tear it off, and I like to put a couple next to each other, and uh, I'm going to tear them off all kind of in the same place at the bottom, because that's gonna be the bottom of my tree. What I wanna do next is grab an X-Acto knife and start from the middle, and I'm so not particular about this, um, but I do just like to draw it all the way down to wherever it ends up coming off. And then I'm gonna peel up the uh, the bits on the side. Now be careful when you're using certain types of paper uh, because you might, or certain washi tape, because you might end up pulling up some of the the paper fibers and, uh, and then you'll have to go back in and fix that. But I find that washi tape is great for this because it's repositionable. So for the most part, you can put that down and it's not really going, like because you can reposition it, it's not really gonna pull up a lot of that, those fibers. Now you could just do this with one, uh, I'm using washi tape, Christmas washi tape here to show you. Um, remember that when you go from the top, you want to start from the same point that you started and then just drag it down in this triangular shape to the bottom of the washi. It doesn't matter if it doesn't finish directly at the bottom, it will still look fine because we're just going for it. And uh, you know, possibly down here, you might want to put in uh, some kind of a candy cane stem or what I like to do here that's a little bit more um, a little bit more advanced, I'll put this down here and I'll still do my little candy cane stem, but I like to have kind of these ribbons coming off that we've just been practicing. Uh, it kind of looks like they're maybe uh, lolly Christmas trees. Um, not really, obviously they're not real Christmas trees. So. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just, I would like to do some ribbons kind of hanging off here, just like as a little bit of a decorative element. Uh, if you've got a bit more time to spend on it and you've been practicing your ribbons, you can do that. And obviously uh, a little bit of star on top. Never hurt anybody. You could put a little angel up there. Uh, you could find another cute, you could find a cute little sticker and put it up there. Um, or you could just do a normal star. Whatever you want. Washi trees is what I'm loving for Christmas because if I use up all the washi tape, then I have a reason to get more. So this is everything that's in our tutorial today. We're going to put it together in a full spread uh, using a swatch doll. So if you haven't checked out the swatch dolls tutorial already, that's the base that we're gonna work off of. Go, I'm not gonna go through all of those steps again because there is a tutorial up already. So we will uh, just start from that base and we're gonna add all our little decorative elements on there and uh, hopefully come up with a fun finished piece.
So let's get to making our final piece. Start with our swatch doll, the, uh, the outline of our swatch doll. When you're making her body, we do kind of want to make her dress this time a lot longer than, uh, than we might normally. So just remember that this long triangle wants to come down kind of far because we're going to turn this into a tree. When you're drawing her arms, draw her arms just out of her body a little bit because she's going to be holding a few of the elements that we drew. She's going to hold a gingerbread man and she's going to hold a candy cane. Everything I do in red is the outline and the base and everything I add in blue is what we've learnt in the tutorial. So this first part is mostly in red because this is the, uh, the swatch doll tutorial and uh, there is a video to that. I will put a description card up top if you need to go and check that out to get your base right. Um, but that's where we're starting today. So I'm working very loose and I'm just penciling everything in so I've got a guide for myself. And this is as much as I kind of want to do. I'm just going to put a bit of a hill down here so she's got something to stand on and she's grounded on something, not just floating in the air. She's magical in Christmas, but she doesn't have wings, so she's not going to be flying today. <laughs> so let's start from the top and work our way down. We're going to start with the Christmas hat, the Santa hat. I want to curve it up because I'm going to do the, uh, the little bit more advanced version. I want to curve this rectangle and put it on her head. I'm going to put my little triangle off to the side, my little Y shape in here, and then I'm going to uh, put my little pom-pom, I actually want my pom-pom to finish about down here, and then I'm going to curve this down, it kind of looks like a sleep hat, what are they called, you know like the Scrooge has? <laughs> now I'm going to add in my fluff, and I do want to have that candy cane kind of a hat, so I'm just going to curve these lines down. Now I remember I said don't do one curve this way, one curve that way. It will look like these curves aren't matching these ones when you look at it straight on. That's why I do suggest tipping your page like this so that it will remind you which angle your curve was going on because you want it to be relative to the first one that you drew. So if you look at it from this way, you've got one curve going up and one curve going down. So it looks like I've contradicted myself. But in reality, if the first one you drew is going this way, every other one has to match that. That's why I do like to tip my page. I find it easier just to, uh, to, to mimic the stroke. And then I'm just going to outline where her hat is. And she's got a hat. I'm going to give her some bauble earrings. So I'm going to put my little circle, or rather massive circle actually. I'm going to go over this Christmas hat. I know it's a little confusing, but bear with me. It'll, it'll all come together in the end. I'm going to put my little square on top, my little scallops, and the hook's actually going to go kind of up, but into her hair and disappear because we're going to pretend that her ears aren't here for this. <laughs> Add on my little stripes. This is going to be a lot of stripes, I can already tell. Let's get to the dress, because I'm sure you're curious as to why I said we we're going to make a Christmas tree. Let's put a little V just here and round this Peter Pan collar in. So we've got that little cute collar. Now what I want to do is section the dress off into four parts. So I'm going to go down a little bit and just kind of cut this off here. These are just my guides. So I'm cutting another one off here and I'm going to cut another one off right there. When we go to outline the dress, we're going to follow the edge, but then we're going to put little random zigzags uh, at the bottom of each tier and that's going to look like she's wearing a little Christmas tree. Alright, in this hand over here, I don't really want to draw the hands, I'm just going to draw my elements over where the hands would probably be. I'm going to add in my candy cane. And in this hand over here, I'm going to add in my little gingerbread man. Now I drew that way too small and my pencil wasn't sharp enough, so we're just going to have to pretend that that blur looks like a gingerbread man. <laughs> Let's draw her little booties. And we're going to draw some presents on the heel. I'm going to keep these very simple, like the, the first presents we drew. Let's add in some washi tape trees. I'm just gonna put a few random trees, nowhere in particular, just around her. Now a solid color washi tape might be better for this because where that white finishes, you can't really tell that there's a tree going on there, but I'm not going to bother too much with it because this is the example and I have prepared one earlier. So <laughs> I'll be showing you that one for how I finished the whole piece. We're gonna draw the tree trunks just coming down, straight down to the presents and to the hill, uh, just to ground them in something. 
I like how this kind of frames your whole piece, the trees, and I like them as a background element, but also something fun to use your wash washi tape on. Now for some, I'm just going to give you that really simple bow and the ribbons. And then for the two on the edge, I do want to start the bow, so with the two little shapes there. Um, and then I want to do these long flowy ribbons coming down this way. And there you go, that is everything that we learnt in today's tutorial, all put together in one piece. This- oh, a lie, it wasn't the fairy lights! I completely missed the fairy lights! Uh, I'm gonna sharpen my pencil and put those in. I cannot believe I missed those, I love fairy lights. Uh, we're going to put our strands, we're gonna start at this top here, and we're gonna round this off. Now you want it to kind of, uh, kind of circle in back around the body, and then because we're going down to the right this way, we're gonna go down to the left this way. And then we're going to go back down to the right this way. We're just going to alternate that strand coming down her body. And then we're just going to put our little squares on there with our little almond shapes. If it looks like there's a lot going on in this, that's because there is. <laughs> <laughs> so I wouldn't try to add too much more than this, especially when you start to add colour. But try and limit yourself to a limited colour palette of maybe three or four colours, because there's a lot going on, and uh, and your eyes will get super distracted if you start colouring in everything, you know, rainbow coloured. I would still love to see that version if someone can be bothered to do that and show me, um, but I personally can't tackle that because my eyes can't handle it. <laughs> and I can normally handle a lot, but there's just, there's a ton going on in this spread, so um, I'm just going to leave it at this and show you my example. And here is one I prepared earlier. So I've, uh, I've had this up on my Instagram, so I think a few of you have seen it. It is, uh, it's, it was done with a watercolor background. I've uh, pulled a lot of this out with pencil and watercolor. I've used these uh, gold accented washi tapes to uh, really punch out some of those features. You can see I've got the ribbons in here. I've got the candy cane. If one of your trees does cross over, like say your body or your hand, oh, I didn't even take out her hand. Luckily, I'm showing you this. Okay, so like I said, in uh, in that tutorial that I did with the uh, the stamp set, I'll link it up in the, the top here. I've uh, I explained when we did the borders that if your washi tape was transparent enough and you could see through the outline, you could just slice over where the outline is and peel that up and reveal the image underneath. So that's what I've done with this dress here because obviously the washi tape went over the top. I just used my X-Acto knife to trace around that and then peeled it up. So um, that is an option for you as well. I found that in this instance, it probably is just easier to to avoid having the washi tape cross over any of your elements at all. It still looks nice out in the background, um, but I just, I was just so ultra when I tried to cross over this and, and be super good about it. So um, I wouldn't recommend doing that because it can get a little confusing, but that is an option for you as well. So, and I'll show you how to do that in the other tutorial that I just linked up top. But I love the washi tape trees. I think they're honestly my favorite part of this. I really, really like this piece. I think it was, it was kind of difficult for me to figure out how to color it properly. So, uh, you know, maybe I would try it again if I could be bothered to color it in again. Um, but I'm more excited to see what you guys are gonna do with it and the examples that you're gonna come up with. So uh, make sure you tag me on Instagram, make sure you put it in the Berkmates Creative Outlet Facebook group so I can see it and, uh, and just share in all your Christmas spirit. I can't wait to see what washi tape you've been hoarding and uh, just how many forests you can make. <laughs> um, so anyway, thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed that lesson and uh, until my next video. Bye!